the point is this, Manuel. What's going to happen when you hit 16? It's already, you might know, have you noticed a slight clearing ahead of you? The smoke clearing called adulthood. Now, for most of us, it's represented by what? By having our own space. Hopefully for you, it'll be going to uni, right? It's almost fucking impossibly expensive for most of us. It doesn't have to be uni. It could be the freaking army. It could be getting a job, whatever it is. For most of us, we suddenly sense, oh, my God, I need my own space. I, I, I want to be up there, be, have my own space and be an adult. That's where I belong, on that ledge up there. I don't need you anymore, crusties. Oh, nana, what's my name? Letters. Right, and you're ready to go. <laughs> now, most people watching this have taken that leap, yeah? You'll do this, Savannah. You'll go, goodbye, Mum. See you later. I'm an adult now. Now, we know what's waiting up there when Savannah lands there, aged 18. Two horrible surprises, right? The first one is, after a few months, the smoke clears and you realise this was just an illusion. This isn't adulthood at all. There are further freaking platforms, yeah? There's one up there called being 21, called having graduated. I can't believe I thought being a skanky student was being grown up. I need to be up there, have a job, have a mortgage. This isn't grown up at all. But it gets worse, yeah? After another few months, you'll look behind at the ledge you were at before. There's your mum folding washing. Dinner's ready, Savannah. Mummy! She can't hear you. Mummy! <laughs> and it will slowly dawn on you as it has every poor bastard in this room, that human existence is longing after one stage, getting there, then wishing you were at the stage before, over and over and over again. And it never freaking stops, right? <laughs> Prepare yourself. And every time you get there, you're going to think, this is it, this is adulthood. But trust me, there are people in this room in the 60s, 70s, 80s still thinking that for the first time. There's lots of different stages. You have different ones depending on whether you're married, single, gay, straight, boy. I mean, recently I had a... This is a bit of a classic one for some men. I, uh, at school, I didn't really have a girlfriend. I didn't have a girlfriend. I didn't kiss a girl at school. Let's not dress this up, right? <laughs> I left school without even kissing a girl, yeah? I was good at Dungeons and Dragons, so don't feel too sorry for me, because in my world, I was a powerful wizard. <laughs> and, uh, however, I did two jokes on TV, and for the first time in my life, I've got female attention. That is bad news for someone like me. Low self-esteem, high sex drive, bad combination. I can't stop doing it, I can't stop. <laughs> right? Now, most blokes, if they find themselves single in that sort of position, it's the you leap up, don't you? That's it. I have arrived on ledge player. This is where I belong. I'm going to shag my way around for the next five years. I'm never going to stop shagging. Shag, 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 shag. I'm going to shag around the world so fast I actually enter myself in a giant daisy chain. <laughs> I'm going to never stop shagging. I'm the shag master general. And then what happens, gentlemen? The smoke clears. Oh, my God. I can't believe I was about to debase myself by sleeping with hundreds of women. I'm wrong. Look at that ledge up there called being with one woman. How good would that be? One woman that I love. A beautiful woman that can fulfill all my erotic needs. That's all I need. One woman who can look after me. I thought this was the ledge, but that was the ledge. Up I go. Come on, gentlemen. Hooray. Poof. That's a bad one, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> what have I fucking done? What have I done? I'm fucking married. Come back and fuck us. There's hundreds of us. I can't get back. I can't get back. She's pregnant. I'm fucked. <laughs> Some of the men laughing, then realising they're sat next to their missus. They're ha ha. I saw. I don't get it. I don't get it. Don't get it. So. Make it accurate. So. <laughs> Uh, newly married couples, newly married couples love this ledge, don't you? We're newly married, but we're sort of annoyingly still in love and kissing all the time. Have you two just met? We've been married two years. <laughs> and we're just, we're just so in love. We still go to festivals. What time did you get up today? 1 p.m. early. And uh, we're just so relaxed. We're married, but we've been love and young. Wait, the smoke's clearing. What's that up there? Two should become three. We need to have a baby, man. That's going to complete us. How good will it be up there? It's going to be amazing. And our baby will be one of the well-behaved ones, not one of the ones that make me have a breakdown and self-harm. It's going to be one of the amazing ones. And we're going to use blackout curtains, and she'll get up at 9 a.m. every day. It's going to be amazing. Up we go. Hooray! Vomit, diarrhea, no sex life. I'm fucking leaving you, David. Right, right, David. <laughs> Middle-aged people love this one. I love my daughter and I love my kids, but do you know what? How good is it going to be, Colin, when they leave home and it's just us two again? I don't mean that in a hurtful way, but it's going to be us two again. We'll be reborn. It'll be like the movie Cocoon. We'll get up and we'll play... 
We'll play Scrabble every day until we get osteoporosis in our fingers. It's going to be amazing. I love you, children, but move out. Goodbye. Up we go, middle-aged people. Hooray! Six months later, the house is so empty, I'm having a breakdown, Colin. Oh, please, I want to get back. Come back, babe. And on and on, and nursing home and death. <laughs> there we are. That's your life taken care of. So, yeah, that's, that's life. A few tips. I am directing this a little bit more at the men than the women, purely because you are better at this anyway, girls. But it's a little move some of you may have forgotten, and the move is this, yeah? <gasps> That. Now, it might not literally be that, but it would be lovely if it was. I'm talking about where something's so exciting, you jump for joy, right? Football doesn't count. <laughs> when was the last time some of you in this room heard about something and you were so excited? I could tell Savannah now, all your mates are out there, there's, fucking min there's a mini bus full of all your pounds, you're gonna fucking drive across the UK partying. Please let me go, Mum, please. I'll behave the shit out of myself. <laughs> you would do the jump, you would. When was the last time some of you did that jump, where you felt so blessed and lucky, and I thought, I can't believe it, I can't believe how lucky I am. It's been a long time, hasn't it? Yeah? I'm not talking about literally doing it, if you can't do it, or you're just a miserable man. I'm talking about doing it on the inside. And we've got no excuse, really. Like, I don't want to get too maudlin, but some of the stuff that's been going on in the news in the last year, some poor people with fucking nothing. When you look around, what we've got, we should be waking up every day and doing that. And we, we get numb to it. You know when you move into your new house? Do you remember how excited you were when you first moved in? You couldn't show people enough. Come, come look at the downstairs toilet. Look at that flush. What a fucking flush. <laughs> well, come through. This is the hallway, but it's more like a room in itself, really. How good's the hallway? I'm just going to hang out in the hallway. Hallway party. Uh, uh. <laughs> Do you remember, like, getting off the train or the bus, and you're so excited that you'll run down the road just to see your new front door? This is my house. I'm a fucking homo. I never thought I'd own a house. I genuinely didn't. It's too expensive. And yet I have, I've done it. You should be doing that every day. So all I'm saying is, take one aspect of your life that you've forgotten about. It might be a banging car that's on your drive. It might be the kid who's 11 that drives you nuts every day. Once you were like that, it's my fucking baby. I've never known such emotions. And you've gone to a like, to kill it and bury it in the garden, right? <laughs> Just stop now and again and wear those eyes on purpose that go, oh my God, that's my little boy. Or that's my house. And when no one's looking, just stop and do one of those. There you go. A bit of free advice. Sorry. It's not a joke, it's just something to do. <laughs> it's true. Because I know girls find that easier than men to do that, yeah? Some of the men, oh, do you think, oh, I'm going to fucking do that, yeah? When I've got my tall bag on my fucking... Right, listen. <laughs> there's a way to... Th you already do it, gentlemen. There's, there's a feeling that bubbles over in you, a childish feeling, when something's so good, so beautiful, so amazing, that you want to spoil it. Have you ever felt that? Where something's so amazing that you paradoxically, you want to crush it or break it. Have you never felt that love? Like when you're at, um, if you're at a wedding and the bride's going, it's the wedding cake, we've had it flown in from Italy, it's the most perfect cake in the world. Just a little sick part of you, like to go, bricks, and run off. I'm sorry. <laughs> it was just so nice, I had to squish it. Or, or when you're stroking a cat and it's just the head's just a little bit too round. Oh, the round Satsuma heard. Satsuma heard of the cat. Put the ears flat. Oh, oh, the O2 dome. You look like the O2. Fuck, don't come in. Don't come in. 